Hello friends, it has been a long time since I last did my video. Just got my little coffee here and Bo is napping and he is growing up so big and uh, the last month or two it's been insane with just like seeing him grow up and now he's walking, he's like very active and I don't know, I've just been exhausted. But anyway, I just thought I should go into back into the bandwagon of making videos. Um, I have been making, um, I've actually been growing some fruits and veggies and stuff on my patio. And so that's also been like a life update of like something I've been focusing on. Um, I will do a little video snippet here to show you guys my garden because I'm loving it. And I think I said it in the last video, like how much it, um, makes you understand the Bible. Um, but I guess there was a, a person that commented about something and I just wanted to touch on it just because I feel like it was something that I struggled with. So maybe this can help somebody else out there. Um, since a lot of you are single, um, since a lot of you guys came through like the how God told me he was the one video and thank you again for subscribing. It's like, I, just kind of left it and we're still getting more subscriptions. So that's awesome. Um, so the, the question was, um, how do you accept love um, from a partner? Because I think some people are struggling with like learning how to accept love from a partner or like scared of maybe previous relationships where they weren't able to accept love. And um, I think, I think there's a couple of things that need to be addressed. So I think past relationships, that's definitely something that you need to kind of like go into. And if you've dated people, and I think I'm talking more to the women just because I'm a woman and I've gone through this. And my husband also went through this, which made me so sad because he was like, oh, you're being nice. And I was like, yeah, baby, like that's how people should act um, in a relationship, like just be kind. but. You know, I go back to when I was 18 and um, actually, no, so this is the story of like my dating life, I guess, was when I was 16, I was in a puppy love high school relationship for like four months and, um, you know, we didn't really hang out because I was in Australia and a lot of schools in Australia, like same, same sex schools. So I wasn't like hanging out with them all day. It was just like on the weekend when I went to tutoring. And then he ended up breaking up with me to date a girl from my year in my school. So again, we're in two different schools and he started dating a girl that was in my year who so-called was my friend. And then the second, I think I never really, I guess, because I remember being very like accepting of presence and kindness and stuff without being like so-called what we like to say a bitch. Um, and then the second boyfriend, which was my proper first relationship when I was 18 to 21. So I was dating a guy for two and a half years. And again, I wasn't, I was a Christian. I grew up as a Christian, but I kind of lost my way when I was young. And so, you know, we we're having sex and this was our first, my first relationship. And I remember having huge bouts of anger and feeling lots of insecurity and lots of like, feeling unloved and abandonment issues. And I think it was coming from my family childhood stuff, like a lot of like um, my aunties and uncles not loving me as much and not really showing me that love as I grew up and as well as like my mom and my dad being divorced. But I think it also did stem from like that 16 year old relationship where he just like automatically just dumped me when he was overseas. And then I was like, I had this fear that my now boyfriend was going to like break up with me and then um, dump me for a friend or like someone that I know or like just somebody. And I think that kind of fell into many of my relationships where I kind of was always trying to seek love and approval and security through a man. Um, because I never really healed from that guy when I was 16. And then that kind of was the story of like my 18 to 21 year old relationship. I was 
well, I one was the perfect girlfriend. I was very angry and I think I didn't know how to react when I was upset. And even like till this day, I'm probably like 90% better, but I was like crazy. And I think I just didn't know how to deal with my emotions when I was upset. But two, if anything happened, any sort of, um, any sort of like um, sign that this guy was not showing me love and affection, I would like immediately like snap and run away and that kind of stuff. And, um, and that kind of kind of went through some relationships. And there was one where I was in a really serious relationship for another two years or something, two and a half years. And it's so weird. And he, he, at initially he, um, had been interested in like kind of dating multiple women. And then he kind of met me and was like, Oh, you're fantastic. And he was kind of like, battling with like trying to be a cheater playboy and wanting to be in a relationship with me and again this is like when I was I don't know 22 23 I I don't even know the, the age that I was but anyway I was with this guy for another two years and then I got saved so again this is my secular relationships and I ended up finding like two years into our relationship that he had semi cheated with um initially in our relationship by sleeping with a girl and texting this girl for about six to eight months within our relationship. And I think that really, really broke me down in terms of my confidence in myself, my security, my ability to accept love. Um, and so I had a hiatus, I got saved, I had a hiatus and I was like, Jesus, I want to do this differently. And that's when I stopped having sex. I stopped dating because I was dating all the time. I was literally on a date every single day in the secular world. Again, that's that's how things are. It's like you just go on, you know, Hinge or Tinder at the time before it was like a sex app and you were just dating and just trying to meet someone that you clicked with and that you could be in a relationship with and you just didn't really have very high standards of spirituality and all these things that really do matter when you're in a, in, in a marriage. Um, and so, you know, I was just going, I was a serial data and I was like, Jesus, I need to stop. There is something not right about this. I don't want to use men. I don't want to be used. I need to like kind of, sorry, there's like, anyway, I think there's a spot on my camera. Um, I need to have a little reset and so I stopped dating I think for a year or, or a year and a half something like that and I was single and I really tried to seek the Lord and then I started dating Christians and then I dated two guys before I met my husband um not for long one of them wasn't wasn't one of them wasn't for long the last one was for a year and a half and then it was my husband so I had dated a lot just to kind of like really I guess you know it took a while to get to my husband but um, I did therapy throughout the whole, like, last four years, three years before, sorry, not three, four years, two, well, at least the last two years before I met my husband, I had done therapy and I did a little bit of counseling to figure out why I was not good at accepting love. And, um, and I think one thing about dating a cheater or someone that dumps you for a friend I think there's a lot of it that has to come with like being gaslit is like a lot of them will make you feel like you're possessive or like you're insecure. Like, why are you so insecure? Why are you so insecure about me speaking to another woman? And it's like, well, I wouldn't feel insecure if you made me feel secure. So I think there's like two sides. There's one side that's like your stuff that you need to deal with. And then there's like the reality of who you are actually dating with who you, you are actually dating or like going on a date with. And so I've noticed with Justin, obviously being my husband and the best man alive, I, I noticed this man never does anything that makes me feel insecure, insecure. So I never have to question whether he loves me or not because he makes me feel secure. And so I think there's like a level of, if you are dating the right man, it's not his job, but he would want to make you feel secure. He wouldn't want to speak to 10 other girls 
and you know um and make you feel a certain way he will make he would want to learn what your love language is like sometimes he's always asking me like baby are you feeling loved and i'm like yeah i'm feeling great and then he's like what's your love language like oh your love language is doing chores or like your love language is like words of affection affirmation and i'm like oh i didn't even think of that but because i learned all of this but i was like but i feel so loved by you i don't really question it but then when you don't have that in a relationship you're kind of like well why do i not feel loved and so i do think that there is a level of aspect that you have to deal with your childhood trauma you have to go back and be like what was my relationship with my dad what is with my relationship with my mom and I had an amazing counselor so if anyone needs a great counselor she's Christian and she's also like just such a, a faith-filled woman but then also like very just like practical and very deep with all the things like like working in your childhood and all that stuff from your past but she would literally go like you know how was your relationship with your father like did you have a male figure in your life that you could depend on? Because if you didn't have that, then it is gonna be hard to all of a sudden trust a man in your life and go, yeah, I trust you and I feel loved by you. You're gonna be questioning it, especially if maybe your father left you or walked out on you or is not abs if, if he's absent in your life, then you're gonna you know, meet a guy and then be like, oh yeah, you know, well, all the men in my life left me, so how can I trust you? Um, and there's times, you know, I, and I struggled a, a little bit of this stuff when I just got married um, because I had had a really messy breakup just before me and Justin um, got together. I mean, it was like a year and a half before I met him, but um, but it was pretty messy. And so I had to deal with a lot of that, like, are you going to leave me for another woman? Because that was basically the pattern of of everything that had happened previously um so i had to like be like okay this guy did this but my husband will not do this but then also dealing with like my daddy issues and then my mama issues of like um always feeling the need to um do something to receive love and that's another thing that i found uh because that's kind of like my relationship with not really like my mother but like i was a caretaker a lot with my mom and my grandma in my life and so that was a reward and then if i didn't do anything it was like reprimanded and so i've developed this way of like giving love of like i have to do something for you because i'm not worthy of either receiving love and and i've noticed that in some people it's like they just have to do something and just not receive and that was a huge thing that i had to really change in my mindset was like accepting love and accepting someone wanting to do something and like really just taking it in and being like wow this person has gifted me with something it's like kind of like the gift of salvation it's like you just have to be like nothing i can do will make i not will not make them love me more but it's like they want to show me this love i have to accept it so because it's their way of showing love is like I want to do this for you so it's kind of like a bit rude to be like no but in asian culture we're taught to be like if someone gives you something you know your auntie gives you something you always be like no 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 and then it's like this exchange and like what do you call it a transactional love and and i think changing your mindset and i, I think there were a couple of really great um youtube videos that i also listened to when i was single of like expecting nothing from your partner so that when they do do something that it is um you really appreciate it because if you're accept expecting something and that was what me and my my first really honest relationship when i was 18 my mother had been single for many many years and i love her she was so fantastic the reason why she was single was because she wanted to make sure that no man in her life was going to like assault me or like sexually abuse me as my stepfather so she was always like i want to be single so that my daughter can have the best life that she can and she really was so selfless so that's wonderful um and she had a lot of guys that liked her and so i learned from her it was like well, you should like me. You should be sweet to me. That's how things are. And it's like, instead of coming in a, in a, in a, 
a spirit of humility and thankfulness, I came in with like arrogance. And that was me when I was dating in my first relationship, I was a B-I-T-C-H. And when they did something sweet, I was like, well, yeah, like what else, like why else would I, like, of course you need to do that for me because you're my boyfriend. And again, like, this is all just being, like, very honest. Like, I had to really look at myself. And some people are not going to be like that. So this is not even going to be, like, this is not even going to speak to some people. But maybe some people do know that they've got a bitchy kind of attitude. And especially with this, this day of feminism and... I can do everything that I want to and uh, no, I'm going to pay for my own meal and I don't need a man. There's this spirit of feminism and again, there's something great with women's rights and women's work, working and all that kind of stuff and getting your own career. But that kind of have, has translated into relationships where we're like, we don't need a man. We don't need to be loved. I can do everything I need to. And I was like that. So I'm speaking to myself. Um, and so having to go to a, a place of submission and being like, okay, is this a man that I can submit under? And then this guy wants to show me love. Um, and then now having to learn how to accept it and really coming in. And honestly, I really do think there's, again, that layer of you need to work with all the stuff that you've gone through. Because if you're 30, 40, you've had 30, 40 years of experience of pain, jadedness, poor relationships. And honestly, I think the more relationships you go through that don't work out, I feel like you do go into a relationship always expecting that it's not going to work out. So you're kind of like accepting that someone would do something but also being like maybe this isn't right and maybe this isn't going to work out um so i think there's one level of like having to deal with like okay just because that relationship didn't work and even though i did think it was going to work i'm going to come into this new relationship with new eyes and also i think it's like coming down to like also like from my last relationship, I've noticed that if you don't love yourself, it's going to be really hard for someone else to love you and accept that love. And that was a huge one for me to really work on was, and it's not arrogance, it's going, because there's a, I think when you, you act like a, a bitch or like in anger in a relationship, I think it's like another way of masking your insecurity and fear of losing this person. And my husband has been so wonderful because our first year of really, our marriage was hard. We literally, I mean, not it wasn't hard, but it was, there was a lot of stuff that was coming up. And because um, we met, we got married within three months and then three months later we found out we were pregnant. So it was like pretty quick, you know, and then you're going through like your whole life now together as a married couple with a lot of stuff, you know? And he was really sweet and he would be like, baby, you're fearful. And I was like, oh. And you know, initially I'm like, no, I'm not. And then now I'm like, oh, well, actually I think I am fearful. I think I'm acting out because I'm fearful. And, and it comes down to like having that person that really truly loves you for who you are and again he is so so wonderful um he always says like baby there's no need to be fearful i'm here and i'm good you know and i think being with the right person that is like that is is so important but then also too being like why do i not see more value in myself where does that come from is it my family? Is it my life? Like, has I gone through a lot of stuff that makes me feel unworthy? And I really had to work through that. It was like, why do I feel unloved? Why do I feel unworthy? Why do I not love myself? Do I not think I'm not good enough in general? Like, if I didn't do anything, do I not feel like I'm worthy of being loved? Um, so, and actually there was a book. I don't know if I linked it previously, but... Um, I forgot what it was called, but it was a book that I did from Amazon. I, I ordered it from Amazon and it goes through like the different attachment styles and like questions. And I was like, wow, I'm 
extremely fearful in a relationship and that's not good i cannot carry that into my future i do not want that in my future and so anyway i will share the book um hopefully amazon will link i've been having issues with like amazon storefront because i wasn't doing reviews properly but anyway i'll write down the word the name of the book because i really think that if anyone wants to go through a little quiz of find like it asks you like if you if you do this how do you react one two three four five and you know you could tick it and stuff and then you add up the numbers and the score um and then it goes through like how do you like deal with that stuff but i think counseling is really important like especially if you are if you know that you 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 don't accept love very well just even from friends like i think before a relationship see how you deal with friendships like do you feel like you always have to give do you feel like you always have to do something to um earn that love and i've again i, I always have to constantly check like when i'm highly stressed when i'm tired it's easy to like slip back into those like habits so don't feel so bad about if you do like if you like have dealt with stuff and then when you're highly stressed or tired or whatever it coming up you know and then being like okay crap did i not deal with it you have it's just sometimes our stress and our anxiety and the day in life can make you feel and can make you slip up but you know um know that you are doing the work even just by watching this video and it is you're able to do it and um it's not perfect all the time unfortunately and i think also attachment styles are really good to learn about and I think also being aware about who you yoke with, like I would say my husband is 100% a secure attachment person. He is so secure in his identity in Christ. He's so secure in himself. He doesn't seek validation from anybody. And it's so beautiful to see someone that does that. And I, I also think it comes down from having um, parents that really loved him that were happily married for many years until he um, unfortunately lost his mom but uh, you know I think having a really loving family growing up really makes him a secure attachment despite having relationships that haven't worked and so I think there is an aspect of family you know uh, family background um, you know the relations that you've gone to and um, your identity in Christ and um, and those are the ways I think that's going to help you as a single person as you're waiting for marriage to kind of work on like if you think you have a problem with accepting love and receiving love and and also I think the first step is like if you feel like me a constant like people pleaser because again that comes down from the insecurity of being loved and like being liked as just me um, sitting back and being like if someone wants to give you something instead of like going straight to like oh let me do this first and then you can give me that i had to sit back and just be like i'm gonna accept this gift and receive it and and appreciate it and then when i feel like i want to give to them which you know i'm always wanting to give anyway but i will do it you know and it will come from not a place of like having to do it because i feel like their gift needs to be transactional, but because I really want to bless this person and if and it means more to them, but also it means more to me. And, but also like learning to just be like, thank you so much for what you have done for me. Like, whether it be an action, a gift, a compliment, even like a compliment, like instead of someone being like, you know, oh, thank you. Oh, you're so pretty. And be like, no, 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 it's okay. That's so Australian. And, just be like thank you so much that is that is so kind of you and like those were little things that I just had to do on a day-to-day -day basis of being like wow that is so kind thank you so much I really appreciate it um not from a place of arrogance but a place of like just receiving that love and letting that love fill up your bucket instead of it be like through that empty bucket because there's nothing to hold it and again I think it all works with your relationship with Christ your will and your identity in Christ. Why has he made you the way that he's made you? What makes you unique? 
you know, the thing, the little quirks that people, that might not be the same as the other 10 friends of yours. You know, I used to be tall and all my friends were short and I always wanted to be short, but now my tallness has made me do the things that I could do in my life, which is model and act and, you know, and, and there's also like a, a positive to being short because you're cute and you're sweet and you're petite and whatever. Like, so what makes you unique? How did God make you? And really accepting that and being like writing down, even journaling the things that you love about yourself. Because most likely if you love that stuff about yourself, then the person that you fall in love with will also love that. And also like the things that I hate, like things that I hated about myself, my husband loves. So it's like now I've learned to love them and I was like, wow, I didn't know like things like, okay, example. I really used to hate my nose. As a model, everyone had the really cool Caucasian noses that were like pointy and I have this like flat nose. And over time, I've learned to love my nose because it just makes me me. And my husband loves my nose. So, and we laugh about it because he had to kiss someone on set for a music video because we're actors. And he had to kiss a white girl and she had more of a nose and we just laughed because he was like, I was going in for the kiss. Like I usually kiss you. And I was like, oh, you know, like boundary. Like he had to like twist his head and we just laughed about it. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. And again, it's like these little things, like he's like, I love your tiny little nose. Cause I can just smoosh it. And I'm like, that's so kind. Anyway, just like little things that you hate about yourself probably is your biggest strength and something that someone else will love about you. So anyway, I love you guys. Thank you for watching and sending all my love to you. Bye.